Hello, 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 everyone. Hello. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, God. Come on in, come on in. Hallelujah. Glory, God. There she is. Hey, hello, hello. I'll be with you all in just a moment. I'm just inviting my family in. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Face to Face Conversations with God as we read His Word. Glory, God. Hallelujah. I'll be on reading in just a moment. Just got to find one more family member. Glory to your name, Jesus. I wonder if there's a way that I can put them in a group. Glory, God. Almost there. Hmm. Thank you so much for being patient as I'm trying to search for this one last name. Why don't you be at the very bottom of my invite list? I wonder if there's a way I can select all. Max Grady. Just one moment and I'll begin reading. Um, yeah, I don't see her. Okay, done. All right, glory. Welcome on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to face-to-face uh, -face conversations with God as we read his word. We are reading Proverbs chapters 17 through 20 today. And we are on day 12, day 12 of reading the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. I am so happy to be on today reading the Word of God. Let me tell you something. I just feel transformation in my life, and I am so grateful. And I pray that those of you that are watching, those of you that watch the replays, that you have a testimony that the Word is actually transforming your life also. It's a blessing to see just in a short amount of time how God will rearrange and do things and the seed of his word begins to uh, illuminate in your life and you see things differently. Glory, so I'm so grateful for that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, my prayer is that, Father, that your glory would descend upon the lives of your people as they read your word, as they apply their, your word to their lives. I thank you that they will have testimonies of the word manifesting in their life. I thank you, Lord God, that where there may be sickness, healing is manifested. Where there may be depression, anxiety is released. And the, the cloud, that darkness, that depression that tries to weigh you down and make you heavy, that it will be released because of the reading of the word. I just believe that when you read the word of God, it manifests and it comes alive in you. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord God, for the flaming fire of God resting in our souls. Thank you, Holy Spirit and dunamis fire for resting in our souls. Hallelujah. And burning out, removing everything that is not like God, annihilated by the root, leave no trace of it. Anything that we have in common with the enemy of this world. I thank you that your word is rooting it out, Lord God. I thank you that your word is 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 going in. Hey, Keith, how you doing? I'm glad you're on. Uh, that your word is going in and it's cleansing our soul as we read your word. So we are going to be starting now. We're reading in Proverbs chapter 17. Uh, one thing I want to remind you all, don't forget to write down 
whatever Holy Spirit is ministering to you when we read these chapters, those are the things that he is wanting to reveal to you personally. So when you write it down and you begin to study and work on what Holy Spirit is saying to you, then you have record with God. Write down your prayers. Write down your, your, your thoughts. And when you get a manifestation, okay, no problem. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate that. Um, when you get the opportunity, you can um, go back and date what God has done. And when you have a heavy trial that comes your way, when a storm comes brewing your way, you have a written record of what God has done. And then you can be just as Moses says, he knew God's ways. Hallelujah. And he knew how God act. He, you don't worry about it. Things come your way and you're like, but you know what? God delivered me of this. God healed me of that. God healed my mom. God healed my dad. God did this. God did that. And you have a written, dated record for yourself because you have to remind yourself of the things, the manifestations of the testament, testimonies and the victories that you have won in God. All right? So don't forget, get yourself a spiral and write down what Holy Spirit is ministering to you at that time. Okay? All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm reading again out of the Good News Translation, um, and I'll be going back and forth, Good News Translation and King James, okay? So here we go. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 1. Better to eat a dry crust of bread with peace of mind than have a banquet in a house full of trouble. A shrewd servant will gain authority over a master's worthless son and receive a part of the inheritance. Gold and silver are tested by fire, and a person's heart is tested by the Lord. Huh. King James says, The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. God is always going to be testing our hearts. He's always going to be proving our hearts. He's always going to be showing us where our heart is. Verse 4. Evil people listen to evil ideas, and liars listen to lies. If you make fun of poor people, you insult the God who made them. You will be punished if you take pleasure in someone's misfortune. Grandparents are proud of their grandchildren, just as children are proud of their parents. Respected people do not tell lies, and fools have nothing worthwhile to say. Some people think a bribe works like magic. They believe it can do anything. If you want people to like you, forgive them when they wrong you. Remember, wrongs can break up a friendship. Remembering wrongs can break up a friendship. We read that back in Matthew. If you want to be forgiven, God says that you have to forgive those who have debts against you. Proverbs just repeats it again. If you want people to like you, forgive them. People are always gonna do something. I do things. People have to forgive me. Just like people do things to me and I have to forgive them. We, have, we, we constantly are forgiving because God is what? Constantly forgiving us. Verse 10. An intelligent person learns more from one rebuke than a fool learns from being beaten a hundred times. Death will come like a cruel messenger to wicked people who are always stirring up trouble. It is better to meet a mother bear robbed of her cubs than to meet some fool busy with a stupid project. If you repay good with evil, you will never get evil out of your house. Wow. King James says, Whoever rewardeth evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. Shall not depart from your house. 
The start of an argument is like the first break in a dam. Stop it before it goes any further. You having a disagreement with your family members, you having a disagreement with friends, kill that thing immediately. Just go, hey, look, let's talk about this. Let's 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 end this right now. Because what's getting ready to be set up is hardness of heart, unforgiveness, family members fighting each other over ridiculously foolish things. You, sometimes you can't even remember why you're fighting or, 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 or why you're mad at each other. The Bible says the start of an argument is like the first break in a dam. Stop it before it goes any further. Kill all disagreements. Talk it out. As Holy Spirit, you know, be in my, my conversation when I talk this over with my brother or my sister. Be in, the, in my facial expressions. Cause my facial expressions not to be harsh. Cause the tone of my voice not to be harsh. Don't you know that the tone of your voice can just kill a conversation you have to ask holy spirit to be in your tone of voice all right verse 18 condemning the innocent or letting the wicked go both are hateful to the lord <coughs> excuse me it does a fool no good to spend money on education <laughs> because he has no common sense that's harsh Wisdom is harsh. Friends always show their love. What are relatives for if not to share trouble? Yeah, verse 17 in the King James. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Verse 18. Only someone with no sense would promise to be responsible for for someone else's debt. <laughs> to like sin is to like making trouble. If you brag all the time, you are asking for trouble. Anyone who thinks and speaks evil can expect to find nothing good, only disaster. There is nothing but sadness and sorrow for parents whose children do foolish things, Jesus. Being careful, I'm sorry, being cheerful keeps you healthy. It's a slow death to be gloomy all the time. Hmm. Corrupt judges accept secret bribes and then justice is not done. An intelligent person aims at wise actions, but a fool starts off in many directions. Foolish children bring grief to their fathers and bitter regrets to their mothers. It is not right to make an innocent person pay a fine. Justice is perverted when good people are punished. Those who are sure of themselves do not talk all the time. People who stay calm have real insight. After all, even fools may be thought wise and intelligent if they stay quiet and keep their mouth shut. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to read that one one more time. Those who are sure of themselves do not talk all the time. After all, even fools may be thought wise and intelligent if they stay quiet and keep their mouth shut. Chapter 18, Proverbs 18, I'm reading from the Good News Standard. People who do not get along with others are interested only in themselves. They will disagree with what everyone else knows is right. That's what wisdom says. People who do not get along with others are interested only in themselves. You're always saying people don't get along with me. I can't get along with nobody. Well, are you only interested in yourself? Wisdom is talking. A fool does not care whether he understands a thing or not. All he wants to do is show how smart he is. Mm. 
sin and shame go together. Lose your honor and you will get scorn in its place. A person's words can be a source of wisdom, deep as the ocean, fresh as a flowing stream. It is not right to favor the guilty and keep the innocent from receiving justice. When some fools start an argument, he is asking for a beating. When a fool speaks, he is ruining himself. He gets caught in the trap of his own words. King James says, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are a snare of his soul. Let me just let that rest for a minute. Are you ready for verse 8? Gossip is so tasty. How we love to swallow it. The Lord is like a strong tower. I'm sorry, I missed a whole verse. Verse 9. A lazy person is as bad as someone who is destructive. The Lord is like a strong tower where the righteous can go and be safe. Rich people, however, imagine that their wealth protects them like high, strong walls around a city. Money can only protect you so far, but God is a strong tower. And those that arise run unto him, run into his safety, run into the cleft where he can hide you. No one is respected unless he is humble. Arrogant people are on their way to ruin. Verse 13, listen before you answer. If you don't, you are being stupid and insulting. Verse 13 in the King James, he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Verse 14, you will, your will to live can sustain you when you are sick. But if you lose it, your last hope is gone. Intelligent people are always eager and ready to learn. Do you want to meet an important person? Take a gift and it will be easy. Verse 16, in the King James says, A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Verse 17, <coughs> excuse me, the first person to speak in court always seems right until his opponent begins to question him. If two powerful people are opposing each other in court, casting lots can settle the issue. Help your relatives and they will protect you like a strong city wall. But if you quarrel with them, they will close their doors to you. You will have to live with the consequences of everything you say. We must watch our mouth. We must watch our words. Ask Holy Spirit to keep a fire, to keep a fence around the mouth. Guard your tongue. Mm. verse 22 find a wife and you find a good thing it shows that the Lord is good to you come on now men find yourself a wife you can find yourself a good thing <laughs> when the poor speak they have to be polite but when the rich answer they are rude some friendships do not last but some friends are more loyal than brothers. Amen. We're in verse nine, uh, chapter 19. Is Proverbs blessing you? I hadn't read Proverbs in a little while. It's really blessing me. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying Proverbs. It is better to be poor, 
but honest, I'm sorry, it is better to be poor but honest than to be a lying fool. Enthusiasm without knowledge is not good. Impatience will get you into trouble. Some people ruin themselves by their own stupid actions and then blame the Lord. Now, come on. I'm going to read that one more time because I know that there are times when we have gotten ourselves into situations and then we have the audacity to blame God. Some people ruin themselves by their own stupid actions and then blame the Lord. Verse 3 in the King James says, The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Rich people are always finding new friends, but the poor cannot keep the few they have. If you tell lies in court, you will be punished. There will be no escape. Everyone tries to gain the favor of important people. Everyone claims the friendship of those who give out favors. Even the relatives of a poor person have no use for him. No wonder he has no friends. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot win any. Do yourself a favor and learn all you can. Then remember what you learn and you will prosper. Doesn't that go hand in hand with what I was saying? Write down, write down the things that God is showing you. Because when you go down this road and, and things get hard and or, or you know you're just going down the road and you're and God is asking you to do some things and you're like oh man I don't know if I can do that you go back and you look and you see how God has done things you're learning his ways you're learning how he moves that only doesn't apply to knowledgeable things as as, a, as an intellectual but let's just take our daily our daily walk with God Write down those things and watch how God moves because then you begin to know him. He's a strategist and you learn his strategies. Verse 9, no one who tells lies in court can escape punishment. He is doomed. Fools should not live in luxury and slaves should not rule over noblemen. If you are sensible, you will control your temper. When someone wrongs you, it is great virtue to ignore it. I'm going to read that one one more time. If you are sensible, you will control your temper. When someone wrongs you, it is a great virtue to ignore it. What, the, what wisdom is telling us is you do have control over your temper. If you know you have a temper, first of all, let's ask Holy Spirit to deliver you from that. And then let's, everything that we're learning, every word that we're reading, everything that you're receiving and embracing in your heart, be ready because the enemy of your soul is going to come and he's going to make sure that he tries to uh, push you so that whatever it is that you learned and you embraced, He's going to try to cause you to throw it out. So if you know you have a temper, know that the enemy is going to try you in that every single time he can. But how do you defeat him? You defeat him with the word of God. I am a sensible man and I am able to control my temper. I am a sensible woman and I am able to control my temper. And because this person has wronged me, I am just going to ignore it. And God is going to bless me for that. God, I thank you for blessing them. That's how you heap coals of fire of love on another person. You just love and pray for God bless them. Now, that's going to be hard to do. And I've had to do it before. But it's very hard to do. Lord, bless them. No, you in in, in inside, you really want to kill them. Just want to strangle them. But you say, God bless them. They don't even know what they're doing, Father. Bless them. It will keep your temper down. It will keep your blood pressure down. It will keep you peaceful. All right? 
verse 12. The king's anger is like the roar of a lion, <coughs> but his favor is like welcome rain. Stupid children can bring their parents to ruin. A nagging wife is like a water going drip, drip, drip. Women, ask God to control all our unnecessary talking. Yes, some of us have much unnecessary talking. My mama used to say, you just like to hear, you like the way your voice sounds. <coughs> Sometimes maybe that may be the problem. You just might like the way your voice sounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Ask Holy Spirit to, to cause you not to be a nagging wife if you have that issue. Verse 15. Excuse me, just one moment. <coughs> Verse 15. Go ahead and be lazy. Sleep on but you will go hungry. Keep God's laws and you will live longer. If you ignore them, you will die. Yeah. Verse 16 in the King James. <coughs> Excuse me. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth it, despiseth it, it his way shall die. Wow. Verse 17. When you give to the poor, it is like lending to the Lord, and the Lord will pay you back. When God pays you back, it comes back multiplied. Multiplied. And you know what else? Let me add this too. So many times we're always looking for a monetary repay, but sometimes it may be the healing, it may be a deliverance of a family member. It may be the salvation of a family member. When God pays back, it's multiplied so much greater than what you gave out. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm kind of caught in between two places because it's chilly outside, but yet if I have the windows open, it cuts off my throat. So then when I cut, uh, shut the windows... <coughs> It gets too warm in here. So I'm getting those little tickles. So I'm sorry about that. Verse, uh, verse 18. <coughs> Discipline your children while they are young enough to learn. If you don't, you are helping them to destroy themselves. <laughs> verse 18 in the King James, it says, Chasten thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. Here, wisdom's talking about a hot temper again. If someone has a hot temper, <clears throat> let him take the consequences. If you get him out of trouble once, you will have to do it again. If you listen to advice and are willing to learn, one day you will be wise. <laughs> <clears throat> King James says, Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Verse 21. People may plan all kinds of things, but the Lord's will is going to be done. <clears throat> Verse 21 in the King James. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. We have all kinds of plans that we want to do, but it's God's will that is going to sustain. It is God's will that's going to be the thing that comes forth. It is a disgrace to be greedy. Poor people are better off than liars. Obey the Lord and you will live a long life. <clears throat> content and safe from harm verse 24 some people are too lazy to put food in their own mouths arrogance should be punished so that people who don't know any better can learn a lesson if you are wise you will learn when you are corrected <clears throat> only a shameful 
disgraceful person would mistreat his father or turn his mother away from his own house home my child when you stop learning you will soon neglect what you already know there is no justice where a witness is determined to hurt someone wicked people love the taste of evil a conceited fool is sure to get a beating <clears throat> chapter 20 drinking too much makes you loud and foolish it is stupid to get drunk verse 20 in I'm sorry verse 1 chapter 20 in the King James wine is a mocker strong drink is a raging and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise <clears throat> Chapter 20, verse 2. Fear an angry queen, king as you would a growling lion. Making him angry is suicide. Any fool can start arguments. The honorable, honorable thing is to stay out of them. Anyone can start an argument. Just stay out of them. Verse 4. A farmer too lazy to plow his field at the right time will have nothing to harvest. <clears throat> a person's thoughts are like water in a deep well, but someone with insight can draw them out. Verse 5 in the King James says, Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. There are people that can help draw out the deep thoughts that you have. The deep counsel that you have with God. And you can draw that out of other people. Have you ever sat down with somebody and they talk about the word in such a way? <clears throat> or even life. That you're like, oh my God. That, that was really profound and it was life changing. I have. I've talked to people like that. And I'm, I'm sure you have too. <clears throat> Verse 6. Everyone talks about how loyal and faithful he is. But just try to find someone who really is. <laughs> King James says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But a faithful man who can find one. Verse 7, children are fortunate if they have a father who is honest and does what is right. The king sits in judgment and knows evil when he sees it. Hmm. Wow. You know evil when you see it. Hmm. Can anyone really say that his conscience is clear? That he has gotten rid of his sin? Wow. King James says, Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from sin. The Lord hates people who use dishonest weights and measures. Even children show what they are by what they do. You can tell if they are honest and good. The Lord has given us eyes to see with and ears to, to listen with. That's good. Let me see how it reads over here. Yeah. Verse 13. <clears throat> if you spend your time... Hey, Kelly, how are you, sis? We're uh, reading Proverbs chapter 20, and we're at verse 13. 13. We're just about done for the day. Um, if you'd like, you can also go back and watch the replay so you can get it all. Verse 13. If you spend your time sleeping, you will be poor. Keep busy and you will have plenty to eat. And I'm reading from the Good News Standard Version. The customer always complains that the price is too high, but then he goes off and brags about the bargain he got. 
if you know what you are talking about, you have something more valuable than gold and jewel. Anyone stupid enough to promise to be responsible for a stranger's debt ought to have their own property held to guarantee payment. God has been saying this all throughout Proverbs about being responsible for other people's debts. Be careful about co-signing with people, all right? Hey, Brother Tony, how are you doing? Uh, we're reading Proverbs, and we're at verse 17. We're almost done for the day. Um, you're more than welcome after the, the reading that you can go back and watch the replay, all right? Proverbs chapter 20, and I'm at verse 17, and I'm reading from the Good News Standard Version. What you get by, <clears throat> excuse me, what you get by dishonesty, you may enjoy like the finest foods, but sooner or later, it will be like a mouthful of sand. Wow. Verse 17 in the King James says, bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Get good advice and you will succeed. Don't go charging into battle without a plan. Hmm. Verse 18 in the King James says, Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. <clears throat> Verse 19, A gossip can never keep a secret. Stay away from people who talk too much. If you curse your parents, your life will end like a lamp that goes out in the dark. The more easily you get your wealth, the less good it will do you. Don't take it on yourself to repay a wrong. Trust the Lord and he will make it right. That may be one of the hardest things that we have to do is to not to go and try to make something right when, when it's been wronged, when someone's done something to us. But we have to trust the Lord. It is he that goes in and, and fights the battle. It is he that corrects the rights. I mean, the corrects the wrongs. All right? Verse 23. The Lord hates people who use dishonest scales and weights. That's been a theme going throughout all of Proverbs. <clears throat> the Lord has determined our path. How can anyone understand the directions his own life is taking? Verse 24 in, in the King James says, Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? And the question is, you have to seek after God. You have to stay in prayer. He will begin to reveal his ways to, I mean, his ways of where he wants you to go, what he wants you to do, what he's trying to show you. Verse 25. Think carefully before you promise an offering to God. You might regret it later. Hi, Tasha. How are you? So glad you're on. What we're doing is we're reading the Bible from beginning to end. We're now in the book of Proverbs. We're in Proverbs chapter 20. And I am at verse 26. I'm just about done for the day. But you can also go back and catch the replay in a few moments. Uh, we're going to be reading Proverbs. And once we finish Proverbs next week, we're going into the book of John. All right. Glad you could make it. And I hope that you come back and continue to watch. It's a blessing having you on. I'm going to read verse 25 one more time. <clears throat> Think carefully before you promise an offering to God. Hey, Felicia, how you doing, sis? I'm so glad you're on. I'm almost done reading for today, Felicia, but you can go back and catch the uh, replay. And I'm at Proverbs chapter 20, and I'm reading verse 25. Today I'm reading out of the King J, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, Good News Standard. 
I'm going to read verse 25 one more time. Think carefully before you promise an offering to God. You might regret it later. Don't go making all these vain promises to God. God, if you do this, then I'm going to do that. And God, if you do this, then I'm going to do that. Because God is going to hold you to that word. You make a vow unto God, he says you must pay it. All right, be careful with that. Verse 26. A wise king will find out who is doing wrong and will punish him without pity. Verse 27. The Lord gave us mind and conscience. We cannot hide from ourselves. You can't hide from yourself. Some people are moving from place to place to place, from job to job to job, from man to man to man, from woman to woman to woman, and your conscience follows you. Let God deal with you. Don't run anymore. Stand still and let God heal those wounded places in your soul those wounded places in your life so that you don't have to run anymore. The reason why you're running is because you're trying to outrun yourself, outrun your conscience, outrun the thoughts. But God is saying, I can heal you. Just stand still and let me work on you. And I promise you stand still and let him work. When he's done, you will actually like the finished product. Verse 28 a king will remain in power as long as his rule is honest, just, and fair. We admire the strength of youth and respect the gray hair of the age. Sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. Jesus. Jesus. Sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. God, don't let us have to be like that. Let us learn of your ways in ease and not always in painful experiences. Jesus, Father, we thank you so much for the reading of your word. We thank you that as we're reading through Proverbs, that wisdom is talking to our heart. Wisdom is correcting us. Wisdom is showing us a more excellent way. Wisdom is exposing all lies that we have believed for years and that we have thought that this is what the word says and wisdom is saying to us, this is not what God has been saying. Read Proverbs and wisdom will tell you what God is saying. Hey, Brother OJ, we're almost done. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up. Uh, you'll have to catch the replay. Love you, brother. Father, we thank you for wisdom in any area of our lack where we lack any area of our lives where we lack wisdom. You said to us that we could come to you and ask you for wisdom, no matter what it is, no matter where we lack it, and you would give it to us and you wouldn't hold it back. So we thank you for the spirit of wisdom guiding our lives. We thank you that we walk in understanding. We thank you that with all our getting, we get understanding. We thank you that we apply the words of Proverbs to our heart and we are walking in in a more excellent way. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you in to come in and heal the areas of our lives that are just been in shambles. We don't even know how to put the pieces back together, but we trust you enough to know that if we grab a hold of you, grab a hold of wisdom, grab a hold of love, grab a hold to the things of God, that our lives will be put back together again. And it will be put back together in such a fashion that the enemy can't even come in and infiltrate because you're building us. You're building our faith. You're building our strength. You're building us with might because of the word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, for what you're doing. And if we blocked you from any area of our lives, we relinquish that block. We take down the walls. We let you unlock the prisons. We put ourselves in prisons because we haven't allowed wisdom to lead us. So we un unlock the doors so that you, Holy Spirit, can come in and uproot everything that is not like God and everything that hinders us from seeing the word, from hearing the word, and from walking out the word. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you in again. 
where we've shut you out, we invite you in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, for those that came on a little bit later, you can go back and watch the replay. It's going to be out there in just a few seconds. I love you, and we will be back on again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Friday. No, tomorrow's Thursday. Today's Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. So we'll be back out there tomorrow. Wait, what day are we on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think I'm off on my days. Anyway, we'll be back out here tomorrow reading the Word of God. Amen. I, I love you all so much. Come back. And those that have missed any of the replays, you can go. Oh, tomorrow's Friday? Girl, I have missed a whole day. Okay. All right. You know you know how we are flight attendants. We miss days. We, we just know the, the day number, and that's about it. All right. So we'll be back out here tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's the 13th day that we'll be reading. So tomorrow we'll be reading Proverbs 21 through 24. We're almost done with Proverbs. Um, it's been a blessing. If you have missed any of the uh, replays, instead of having to scroll through my page, you can go to the Facebook page. It's called Face to Face Conversations with God. And you can bypass all of the things that are on my actual page and just go listen to the actual readings all right it's been a blessing don't forget to hit the share button if you're watching the replay hit the share button i'm believing god that we're going to go into nursing homes that we're going to go into people's homes that are shut in that can't get out so that they can hear the word of god i'm believing god that we're going to have soldiers listening i'm believing god that we're going to have cia agents listening i'm believing god that we're going to have people across this world listening why because if you get the word of god written on your heart you cannot be fooled by the enemy of this world things are gonna happen but if you don't know the word of God you'll run to anything that you see and hear and think that this is the way I'm supposed to go but God wants you to have a specific plan and the plan is his word that way you're not tricked by the enemy of this world God does have structures and, and, and standards that he wants us to live by. But if we don't know his word, we don't know what his standards are. We don't know what his will is. So we want to get the word of God in our hearts so that we will not be swayed by every doctrine that comes up. Hey, Sherry, how you doing? So glad you're on. We're just about finished for the day. Um, and you can watch the replay in just one moment. We just finished Proverbs 17 through 20. So it's a blessing, sister. I hope that you can come back on again tomorrow. I'll be back on tomorrow about the same time, okay? I love you all. Come back, watch the replays, hit share, hit share, hit share, because everybody wants to hear the word of God, all right? I love you all so much. Thank you for allowing me to read the word of God with you. And thank you for growing with me. Thank you, uh, Felicia. Love you. All right. Bye-bye, everybody.